Hello everybody! This is our video solution to problem 4 from Quiz 13, Spring 2023, Math 302 at Cal State Fullerton. In this problem we're given an integral domain, R, and we want to show that the units of the polynomial ring over R are precisely equal to the units of the underlying ring R. Alright, so first uh, we're looking for the units just a quick reminder what does it mean to be a unit right can't solve the problem if you don't know what the words mean so if if f is a polynomial over r then f is a unit so remember this u of tells us we're going to look at the the set of units uh, f is a unit if there exists some polynomial g such that f times g is equal to 1, where here we think of 1 as either the, the constant polynomial, uh, 1, or even just as an element of r, right? So it works either way. So that's what we're, we're trying to find, right? Is what are the elements of this polynomial ring that have such a, uh, an inverse element g, right, making f into a unit? And the goal is to show that actually the units are only going to be those units of the ring R. All right. So let's assume we have a unit. So let F be a unit in Rx. Okay, so there exists, there exists G in Rx. Of course, G will also be a unit such that Fg is equal to 1. And let me apply the degree map to this equation. So the degree of, well, I'm going to work it backward. The degree of 1, that's very easy. We know that that's 0. Right? The, the, the constant polynomial has degree 0, except for 0 itself, but that's kind of a special case. All right, but now 1 is equal to fg. And when we take the degree of a product of polynomials, well, we don't know anything about this typically if we just have some arbitrary ring, but if we have an integral domain, then we know that the degree of a product is going to be the sum of the degrees. Okay, so this is where we're using that R is an integral domain. All right, I know that the degree of any polynomial, right, so if I have any P, is um, greater than or equal to 0 if p does not equal 0. All right? So the degree map, that, again, that's a special case. The degree of 0 is negative infinity. But for all the other polynomials, the degree is at least 0. And in this case, well, do I know that f and g are not the 0 polynomial? Well, sure. Because f times g is equal to 1, neither one of them could be 0. If one of them was 0, their product would be 0. So this implies actually up here that f is not equal to 0 and g is not equal to 0. OK, so now I have two non-zero uh, polynomials. I take their degree. I'm going to get two non-negative numbers that add up to 0. Well, the only way you can take non-negative numbers and add up to 0 is if both of them are 0. So this implies that the degree of f and the degree of g are both 0. In this case, I really care about the degree of f, so I'm just going to say this degree of f has to be 0. But which polynomials have degree 0? Well, just the constants. So this implies that actually f is not just a regular you know, arbitrary polynomial. It's actually an element of the ring R. Right? That's what it means to be a constant polynomial. OK, but on the other hand, we know that f is a unit. So not only is f going to be a unit <coughs> in rx, but it has to be a unit even in r. All right, well, let's go back here to the degree of g bit, right, to, to make this very clear. So we knew that the degree of f had to be 0, but also the degree of g had to be 0, which tells you that also g is in r. So g is the inverse of f, but it's also in the ring. So we actually know that f is a unit in r because it has an inverse in r. So this implies that g is f inverse and g is in r okay so f is invertible and it has an inverse in r 
and therefore f is a unit in R. Okay, so we started with an element in the units of R, x, and we con concluded that that element was actually a unit of R. So this implies that the units of the polynomial ring are contained in the units of R. Of course, every unit of R, you can think of that as a polynomial, it's a constant polynomial, and it has a unit, or it has an inverse rather, in R, but that inverse is also in Rx. So every unit in R is also a unit in Rx. And therefore, the set of units of the polynomial ring are precisely equal to the set of units of the underlying ring. And there we go. All right, we'll see everybody next time.